As I detailed earlier today in my radar, Spotify has been under fire for not dropping episodes of the wildly popular Joe Rogan experience for complaints over COVID misinformation. They have now announced a new content warning airing ahead of any podcast episodes discussing COVID-19. Rogan has responded to the controversy via his Instagram account. Let's take a look at some of that. I wanted to make this video, first of all, because I think there's a lot of people that have a distorted perception of what I do, maybe based on sound bites or based on headlines of articles that are disparaging. Um, the podcast has been accused of spreading dangerous misinformation, specifically about two episodes, a little bit about some other ones, but specifically about two, one with uh, Dr. Peter McCullough and one with Dr. Robert Malone. Dr. Peter McCullough is a cardiologist and he is the most published physician in his field in history. Dr. Robert Malone owns nine patents on the creation of mRNA vaccine technology and is at least partially responsible for the creation of the technology that led to mRNA vaccines. Both these people are very highly credentialed, very intelligent, very accomplished people, and they have an opinion that's different from the mainstream narrative. I wanted to hear what their opinion is. I had them on, and because of that, those episodes in particular... Uh, they, those episodes were labeled as being dangerous. They had dangerous misinformation in them. The problem I have with the term misinformation, especially today, is that many of the things that we thought of as misinformation just a short while ago are now accepted as fact. Do I get things wrong? Absolutely, I get things wrong, but I try to correct them. Whenever I get something wrong, I try to correct it because I'm interested in telling the truth. I'm interested in finding out what the truth is. And I'm interested in having interesting conversations with people that have differing opinions. And in, that, in the rest of that uh, video, he also he thanks Spotify for standing by him. He, he actually apologized, apologizes to Spotify that they're in this position. Uh, but I thought that was a, you know, that was a pretty good uh, defense of what he's doing along the lines of things um, the, the three of us have have pointed out that you know who who gets to be a, uh, who gets to dis, to give the deter the, the term disinformation to say what it is is a little is a little selective that our, our you know our health authorities have been wrong time and time again and it's only it's only you know the crazy right-wing anti-vax anti-mandate people who are accused of spreading misinformation never the cdc never dr fauci never rochelle walensky never never the president so it's uh, I, I i think he's making a, a you know a pretty legitimate point and i hope spotify continues to stand by him you know, he also listed all of the, you know, in the longer clip, it was about nine minutes long, the whole thing. But he also listed all of the things that were once considered misinformation that you were removed or your videos removed or you're censored from YouTube or from various different platforms for saying and then saying now that's true. You know, and he went through the long list. And as I was listening to the list, I, I couldn't help but to ask myself the question, what have they what have they censored that they've been right about yet? You know, I mean, so far, the big things that they've censored. Like they started off censoring the lab leak theory and then they and then they went and they started censoring any sort of, you know, uh, complaints about masking. And then they censored any sort of claim that the vaccines caused any sort of myocarditis. And then they censored the vac yeah. claims that the vaccines didn't, you know, if you said the vaccines didn't stop the spread. So it's what have they censored at this point where they've actually been right? And, you know, so when you're playing the game of who's got more check marks in the right box versus wrong box, I don't think the CDC or those arbiters of truth of social media and misinfor you know, going after misinformation, I'm not sure when they've been right yet when it comes to well, this Well, I've come up with a couple, uh, a couple cases, right? The, is, uh, so uh, some Alex Berenson's, for one, has, has implied or suggested that there are a, a lot, the, the vaccines are killing people, that a lot of people die, you know, they, they cite the VAERS, Doctor. list which is yeah. very which is misleading because you know like old people are taking the vaccine to pr protect themselves from covid and then are you know dying because they're elderly or in poor health it's not because they're taking the vaccine you know when millions of people are taking the vaccine some are going to die because they were going they were at the end of their lives their natural lives it's not the vaccine's not causing it but some in the anti-vax claim uh, 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 camp have claimed that and a, have been punished and I, I think that's an example and then also probably some of the stuff with hydroxychloroquine for instance which still doesn't like there's no evidence that it helps at all yeah. Doctor, but i but yeah. the rest of your stuff i agree with you dr mccullough backed that up He's, he went on to alex jones's show on infowars and said that there had been 180,000 people who yeah. had died 
uh, as a result of the vaccine and, and pointing to this pointing to this study. I heard him speak in an event. I, I you know, I heard him re repeat these. Right. It's different from saying the vaccine's not working well enough. It's not, you know, stopping transmission enough. It's not that all that all that stuff. Yes. But the, the it's not it's not killing right. thousands right. of people. So you're right. So there is a, a ballpark of yeah. stuff where they have gotten things wild, wildly yeah. wrong. Um, so I the, speaking of the, the kind of liberal pressure on Spotify here, you know, this this weekend, I ticked a bunch of people off by saying by by pointing out that there has been a campaign over the last five years, maybe, you know, heightening over the last couple of years to really pressure people on the center left and the left not to go on the Rogan show. You know, don't legitimize the mm -hmm. uh, Joe, Joe Rogan's show. And in that is a point that Crystal Ball had made previously in one of her radars a few months ago. Well, I guess it would have been a year ago at this point. <laughs> uh, or maybe she, maybe she made it on breaking points. Uh, but her, her argument uh, was that the, the right has really tried to recruit Rogan over to their side, whereas the, the left has tried to push him away. Whenever Rogan would agree with something that the right stands for, all of the right-wing outlets would run headlines Rogan backs our idea mm -hmm. about X. Mm -hmm. And the left-wing outlets would run something Rogan terrible for backing X. Whenever he said he supported Medicare for all or supported a higher minimum wage or you know, the whole litany of left-wing populist things that he supports, complete silence from both the left and the right. The right doesn't mm -hmm. want to acknowledge that. And left, for whatever reason, didn't either. And so what you're left with is the general impression that he's a, he's a right-wing person. Some uh, on the left wanted, wanted Bernie Sanders to reject his reject endorsement. His endorsement. Right. Reject his endorsement. Mm -hmm. And after that, he was like, I'm done with politics. Yeah. And yeah. so he just went further into the culture war stuff. And so the left doesn't want to take any collective responsibility for organizing in influential people. They, they think, look, Joe Rogan's going to do what Joe Rogan's going to do. No, that's not how politics works. Politics, you're supposed to collectively organize toward a goal. You're, like they're, they're, they, but instead, their strategy was, don't let anybody left wing go on his show. And that didn't work out so well, did it? Well, I think we're seeing this a lot when it comes to the left. There is this sort of purity. You know, you must be in line with every single way of thinking in order to be considered on the left, in order to be championed by left media. Uh, or liberal media. I, I know there's a lot of con there's a lot of uh, debate about what is left and what is liberal and what you know the, the terms. But you get what I'm saying. Um, and we see this all the time. Like the right, like what you mentioned, Ryan. They'll champ. I mean, look. Like I get right wing people championing me all the time on Twitter. Or I'll go. You know, for but it depends on what I'm saying. They'll ignore all the stuff they don't agree with. They'll just say, okay, we'll just forget about that. You know, she, she's saying that kind of wacko thing over there. But we'll we'll like her for this one thing. The left doesn't do that at all. It's how dare you like that person for that? Yeah, okay, maybe they agree with us this one time, but they're actually alt right uh, neo Nazis. Uh, be besides this. And so, therefore, we can't uh, we can't like anything else. You know, we can't like anything about them, even if they agree with us on this one thing. It's a very different culture, and it kind of does go to show that right now in this day and age, it hasn't always been this way by any means. But right now, in the era we're living in, the left seems to be more uh, less open to different ideas, more into canceling and censoring than the right that will accept you and embrace you for that momentary, you know, for that moment that you agree with them. And the left will just say, no, I don't care. Right. So what I need to do, I'll embrace and elevate all of the left wing things that, that you say. And then I'll right. just ignore yeah. the right wing ones. There you go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> do it that way. Otherwise, you create this, this feedback eco ecosystem loop that, yeah. that winds up with hmm. Rogan talking just to Malone. And then he follows that up with Jordan Peterson, just, just as a thumb in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we will have more rising right after this.